This explains us all about Kobe and earthquake in a, a high income country. Don't forget that's what that means, HIC, high income country. But before we start, just a couple of key terms that AQA expects you to know. Um, the primary effects of an earthquake, those are the initial impacts of a natural event on people and property caused directly by it, for instance, the ground buildings collapsing following an earthquake. Whereas secondary effects are the after effects that occur as indirect impacts of a natural event. Um, sometimes on a long time scale. So you might get fires due to ruptured gas mains resulting from ground shaking within an earthquake. Okay. Um, or air pollution from a from a forest fire. Short term responses are the reaction of people as the disaster happens and in the immediate aftermath of a disaster, just a couple of days, okay? Um, longer term responses are late reactions that occur in the weeks, months and years after the event. So the Kobe, Kobe earthquake, you can see there, Kobe is in Japan. It's on the southeast coastline. Um, it is near a destructive plate margin and it is a mega city. It's got one of the largest container ports in the world and a lot of that container port is built on uh, reclaimed land from the sea okay so it's quite marginal vulnerable land it is quite far from the plate margin than most of the major cities in japan uh, but it's still found on a on a major fault line and the earthquake that hit during 1995 it was in winter so that's a factor uh, measured around 6.9 on the on the richter scale and there the pacific plate's being pushed under the eurasian plate so we'll have a look at that in a in a moment so it's a, on a subduction zone the other thing to bear in mind that the focus was only 16 kilometers below the crust, so it was quite shallow. And it happened in the morning when people, a lot of people were in bed or cooking. And 10 million people live in that area. So you can see the one of the effects there, there's the, um, the freeway that collapsed completely. It was built to be uh, earthquake proof, but it wasn't it wasn't up to the shaking in this in this earthquake. OK, so you can see the, the location of Kobe there down on the southeast coastline. Um, you've got Kyoto. A little bit further north, just to the uh, southeast, you've got Osaka and Tokyo is quite quite a way away. And then you can see the destructive subduction zone here, where the Philippines plate and the Pacific Ocean plate pushing underneath the Eurasian continental plate. Okay, so there's your plate movements. One of your tasks is going to be to complete the maps, so or you've got the labels there in the boxes. Just pop those in. Um, and then we get earthquakes here because. Um, the Pacific Plate and the Philippines Plate are pushed underneath the Eurasian Continental Plate. Um, and where they do, um, along the fault lines and so on, the plates lock in place, uh, strain energy builds up, and when that energy is released, it's released as seismic energy, uh, which we know as earthquake waves. Okay, so this was a, a big event for a high income country. It was a really big event, um, not so big as. as Haiti, which we'll go on to in a moment, but it, is, it was a catastrophic event. And that's despite the fact that many of the buildings were earthquake proof from recent years. But a lot of the older buildings simply toppled over or, or collapsed. A lot of the traditional wooden buildings in the city survived the earthquake, but they burnt down in fires caused by broken gas and electricity lines. So uh, more than 5,000 people died in this quake. 300,000 were made homeless. 102,000 buildings were destroyed in Kobe alone. And the estimated cost to rebuild was 100 billion pounds. OK, um, the worst affected area was the central part of Kobe, including the main docks and the port. And uh, emergency aid needed for the city was 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 really difficult to get about because the roads were damaged and covered in in rubble. Raised motorways collapsed during the shaking. And. Um, the earthquake, like I said, occurred in the morning when people were cooking breakfast, causing over 300 fires, which put two days to to put out. So in terms of responses, uh, many, many responses, but uh, water, electricity, gas, telephone services were fully working by July 1995, which is that's really quick. And the railways back in service by August 1995. A year after the earthquake, 80 percent of the port was working, but the Hanshin Expressway, which we saw on the previous slide, uh, was still closed. Uh, and four years later, they managed to build 134,000 housing units. OK, but some people were still in temporary accommodation. They passed new laws to make buildings and transport structures even more earthquake proof. And more instruments were installed in the area to monitor, monitor earthquake movements. Um, the government was criticised at the time for being reasonably slow to respond in the immediate days after the earthquake but the area hadn't had an earthquake in over 400 years um, and they were caught a little bit by surprise 
So your task, um, you can watch this video and complete this, this part of the table, read pages 13 and 14 of the Cool Geography chapter, or you can go and have a look on, on the Cool Geography website, okay, and have a look at the, the Kobe earthquake um, resources on there. Um, and get as many facts, figures, causes, impacts and responses as possible. Don't forget, we do want factual evidence in your case studies for use within the within the exam. Okay. Uh, and then you can have a think at the end, was the Kobe earthquake well, well managed? Um, the worksheet, okay, um, runs alongside that. Okay, so you can see the... Uh, the various different responses. There's your um, the boxes that you can write in, okay, to label up your map. There's a flow chart for explaining how the earthquake happened, and then there's your there's your table there. Uh, don't worry if you if you use different case studies, you can just change the the titles at the top. Okay, so we'll just finish up as usual with a little stupid dad joke. Uh, what do you call a cow in an earthquake? A milkshake.